Hi guys, today we are doing our March nature journal so I'm really excited about this. It's not as springy, this is from last March. Um, so we actually have had, in the first two weeks of March we got quite a lot of rain. We have had some nicer weather coming along now but um, yeah because we had such a late winter which you would have seen in February's nature journal um, this is more like what the beginning of March looked like for us and I was hoping for some cherry blossoms for the end of March you can see there's still snow on the ground uh, but I think hopefully next month we'll produce some cherry blossoms Okay, so this is more of a garden party or like let's go for a walk in the garden find some things that are blooming and kind of have a little look at how they eventuate in the sketchbook so it's not a full tutorial it's just a really uh, nice and low-key kind of monthly check-in and let's talk about what's blooming so we're also going to look through some footage and kind of see how the doves have um, been going so the last year and then what they're up to this year so you can see that we first started seeing them walking around the front yard here we were actually waiting for them to start in the back nest because that's where they started last year at this time but they have actually gone to the front and um, made a nest up in the rafter there where they don't get as wet I was also hoping to maybe uh, paint some of these either in my sketchbook so not in the actual nature journal these were the flowers we got for my sister you can see that they have been in her room for a few days they are not doing that well here but I really really love these double lilies I'm not sure if they're called sunburst lilies but they are so beautiful the perfume is so fragrant So there will be lots more tutorials about roses coming up this year as well these are definitely on my radar so I wanted to take a little bit of footage here and one of the things that you can do is turn your flower around and look at it from different angles even sketch it from different angles and try and figure out which one you you know prefer So you can see that I keep coming back to these lilies so I am trying to figure out here they're quite a complex flower do I want to paint them more loosely do I want to try and um, get in there and really paint the detail and then with white flowers as well you're always kind of thinking about how you want to color the shadows because the shadows is really what you're putting into the white flowers so that's just another thing to consider So the other thing is you can see this little plate here of things we collected in the yard and I've got bits of bark, dried bits of pine, I love the dried hydrangea so I collected another little branch of that and also the dogwood so I absolutely love this branch it's super fascinating you can see that the branches go up so they curl up instead of sort of curling down or it's really strange they all curl up um, so it's really fascinating then I had just a twig of the blossom tree and then the bark there but so we're going to again go into the Travelers Company standard size I think this is dark brown or chocolate brown and I've created a little insert inside so I will flip you through that now I still haven't um, bound it together 
So inside I have this um, leather folder from 1.1, 1 1.61 soft goods. I think uh, I got it from Baum Kuchen. I will link that below. And then I have just got this sort of insert with folded cotton papers and you know different papers that I have uh, folded up to kind of create um, enough pages for every month of the year so basically I'm doing three pages per month so you'll see here that kind of these two are January when you flip it over that's still January and then I have also put in a bunch of just papers from my printables just so that I can either um, put in little notes or I can um, put in specimens or dried flowers and things like that here as well so once that's done you know these sort of little group of pages here we go to February and then this will be the first of three pages for February so that's just how I have decided to do it and I'm really enjoying it so every year um, as per Lara Gastinger's perpetual journal so she does it every week of the year so I'm doing it monthly um, and I will link her info below but um, so it's a perpetual nature journal and you come back to those pages every year and see kind of what different things are blooming sometimes we have like a, you know early winter sometimes a late winter so you know that affects how everything grows and then um, so I just kind of start the sketches here so I basically hold the specimen up and then I just kind of sketch behind it so it's not exactly tracing it but you're kind of getting a visual of how you want it to look on the page while you're sketching underneath it if that makes sense One of the things I'm looking for when I do these is not necessarily exact accuracy but just a general um, sketch and looking at colors as well and just kind of practicing sketching I guess it's a very easy going process and then here we have snowdrops is that what they I can't remember um, yeah I think they're snowdrops and then um, I didn't really like the way so you can see like I was holding that there and then I um, and Lara tells you to do it in pen which I do think is a really good idea and I absolutely love her uh, method but for me I just um, because I'm just kind of starting this I want to just do it in pencil with the just so it, that little bit of pressure is taken off and um, you know you could see there that I think that was the first time I erased anything um, I just wanted those bottom branches to go down about an inch so yeah um. so I've really been enjoying this monthly nature journal it makes you have to sort of go out and find these moments and enjoy the sunshine and um, look look around and see what's growing what's not and what sort of attracts you as well like you can see here I really really wanted one of these uh, larger hydrangea specimens but there's just one little tiny bush behind the shed and I didn't know if if any of the um, you know dried branches like this would have survived since we've had so much snow but we found one and I was so happy about that And then we had been we kept checking the nest out the back we kept checking and checking every day because last year we just all of a sudden found an egg I think it was about March 10th or something like that and um, so yeah we were we were 
you know, being vigilant about that. And then we actually ended up finding them out the front. So that was a bit of a surprise. And so again, you can see here, I have some uh, new little flowers here that I wanted to put in. So I laid them out how I wanted them on the page. You can see the middle one had dried up a bit. It wasn't quite touching the water. And so then I also put in the catkin from the river birch trees. Um, and I really, I didn't mind them at this stage. I probably, I think one of the problems is because I am trying to um, do the videos and not be too, you know, overly particular about everything, just try and get it done. Um, I, I don't like the way this snowdrop, especially like with the purple around it, I don't like the way that turned out. So I might end up um, getting some acrylic paint and painting out the outline. Anyway, whatever I do, I will show you that, you know, next month or whatever. But um, yeah, it was really fun, a nice month of kind of enjoying uh, looking for these little things. I, I put this dogwood back in February because I did grab one then, but I didn't get to paint it. So I was happy to have that in. I really, really love the colors of this. It's really beautiful. And you can see that this is, this was the branches in winter. Um, with the ice that have formed around them and it's just so beautiful and then I will actually show you some footage from last year when the tree actually flowers so you can see the, the it in bloom so it's really lovely there very delicate and you can see like everything's pointing up and turned up I really love it So you can see that this is what I hoped the last uh, week of March would bring. So every year it's kind of different and sometimes when you get, so that you can see the doves in the first nest, sometimes when you get the nice early spring you get the blossoms in the last week of March. And again this was from last year. So this is the first nest that the doves were in and this was where I was expecting them again this year but they obviously realized they didn't like this nest very much i don't know if this was their first year we weren't sure if they had been here because it was our first year in this house so we weren't sure if um you know they had been here the previous year or not um, but obviously they just change around quite a bit and this nest here actually got we had quite torrential rain in um yeah that whole year so we kept actually covering them with some you know plastic like this and they seemed to really enjoy it they stayed nice and dry um, they didn't mind us you know fussing about around them So this was actually their second nest last year and you can see they don't even like they didn't really build a nest here they just grabbed a whole bunch of hydrangea branches and hopped in here but it was right near the drain pipe so there were a couple of close calls they thankfully they were fine and everything was fine then this was their third nest last year which has actually now become their first nest this year I know a lot of you have absolutely loved um, seeing the doves and so I just wanted to give you that kind of little uh, timeline of you know their nests and how they've been and they're doing really well this is footage from this year so they're up there they're very happy and um, yeah that was pretty much it for uh, the March nature journal video so I will leave you with a little bit of footage from Easter last year and happy Easter if I don't um, see you and you know until after then I hope you have a lovely one and I will see you guys in the next video bye